Hi there, it's Amanda here from Lolly Lulu Crafts and today I'm going to be making some cards with backgrounds made from Tim Holtz alcohol inks and I'm going to be using this Upo paper. Now Upo paper is not really paper, It's I'm not quite sure what it's made of but it's kind of almost like a plastic and the great thing about it is that it doesn't um, absorb the ink so it doesn't distort it kind of all sits on the surface so it gives you this great surface for the ink to kind of move around and you can kind of do all sorts of random patterns and you don't have to be too precise about it to make some great great patterns so for this first one what I'm doing is just um, some kind of rainbow striped here just from blues down to yellows and then I'm taking some pure alcohol um, and just a paintbrush and I'm smushing across I'm starting from the lightest color up to the darkest just so I don't kind of uh, make it go too muddy down at the yellow end and then I'm going to take some of this alcohol and I'm just dotting it into the ink on the Upo paper there and what it does is it kind of moves it apart as you can see and lightens it now if you have the blending solution that you can get from Tim Holtz that doesn't actually lighten it it just moves it but what I found then was that I wasn't happy with how that went it was sort of lightened it too much I didn't like it so much so I went back and I just redid it with my brush and kind of got rid of those marks and then you can still see the alcohol is moving around because I've put that alcohol on there and it's just moving and moving and so I'm really liking how that's coming out so I'm just going to leave that to dry naturally um, so I'm going to pop that to one side now I wanted to show you a more random kind of pattern where I literally just took some different colored inks and just blobbed them on first of all you can see how the Upo paper is is taking that ink and moving it on that surface and you could also see but when I picked it up how it really didn't distort it despite all that um, alcohol ink or the actual pure alcohol it still stayed perfectly flat which was great and I've just used three colors here and you'll see that when I pop it into the middle of a color that's already there the alcohol kind of doesn't mix up it kind of separates down and what I'm doing here is just taking my pure alcohol and my paintbrush and I'm just sort of smushing around the edges of the little dots of ink that I've put down and filling any white bits of the Upo paper in and then I'm just dotting over it again using the alcohol just to separate it and lighten it and just to give it this really random effect so then I wanted to add a little bit more ink because I felt that it again I just I'm still learning it this is literally the first time I've done this so I thought mm, I put a bit too much alcohol on what I think I'm forgetting is that the alcohol lightens it whereas obviously if I had the blending solution it would probably do what I was trying to achieve a little bit more with the alcohol here but this is the great thing is that none of it is ever wrong and you know I did that I thought a mm, bit too light so you just add a little bit more ink and I know it looks like that's a crazy amount of ink going on because it's like puddles of it but you're hardly getting any come out of your bottle at all it's surprising just how much it kind of gets down on the paper and looks like loads but actually just how little is being used now here you can see now I've kind of mudged it together a bit much so I'm again just dotting some alcohol on there to separate it a little bit and then I shall go back and um, let that dry off a little bit separate and then I shall go and I'm gonna take a little baby wipe and just take some of the excess of the ink off so that when I next put some stuff down it's got a little bit of the ink taken away and when I put the um, dots down it might separate in a different way because there's not quite so much puddles of ink on the Upo paper there so then I decided that I would take my heat gun and just dry it off very slightly and I was interested in the effect of that it dried really fast I'm not saying it's 100% dry but again it had a, a different effect then when I added more ink it reactivated what was there but what was underneath was no longer puddles so it kind of was like going back to the white paper but with with ink already on there so it's kind of colored 
But the way it moved was kind of like on the white paper when we first put it on. Um, but it also kind of moved. You can see it was kind of moving the ink underneath, but without creating big puddles again. So it was quite interesting. And again, I like the way how when you add different colours into the previous colour, it doesn't merge together unless you take your brush and do so. So um, I thought that was quite an interesting effect. And I was enjoying kind of playing with the... Um, ink and then heating it and drying it and then adding a bit more and just playing around with that effect because it definitely gave a different uh, effect is the only word I can think of but it definitely just gave a different look and and the way it reacted was very different and I was I had a few little white dots there that I wanted to fill in and again I put the ink in but rather than let it to continue spreading I quickly went down with the heat gun now what you'll find is the heat gun kind of does spread it out a bit but it also after a few seconds it kind of stops it in its tracks so now it's sort of dry I mean, it's not 100% dry, but now it's sort of mostly dry. I thought it would be interesting to add just a little bit of the alcohol in a splatter pattern to create some white dots on uh, to the page so that it cr um, created some real contrast between the colours that were there and then and just added that real contrast. I just thought that would be a really effective look. And again, before it was able to keep moving too much, um, I dried it off a bit with the heat gun. So then I did a third um, background, very similar idea to the one we've just done, except for I didn't use the heat gun. And you can see there with the red, and you can see the difference there, how the um, inks have clearly continued to move and they've dried naturally so you get a very different look from that. So these um, UPO papers are 5 by 7 so I've created myself some 5 by 7 white card base this is there and then I've taken the backgrounds and uh, cut a quarter inch off the short side and one quarter inch off one long side so basically when we put it against our card it will give us an eighth of an inch around of white on all four sides um, don't cut it on all four sides if, unless you want um, that because otherwise you'll have too much of a gap so now I wanted to create some sentiments um, to go over the backgrounds and I thought it would be fun to do some die cuts so I used this ultra new happy birthday die I cut it three times and then using some spray adhesive I just stuck those three together to create a sort of more um, almost like a chipboard effect sort of sentiment which is quite a nice um, look for it and then I cut a, another one this is a Sue Wilson one I didn't cut this three times I left that as a single layer so again a different look as well as a different sentiment and then the third sentiment I decided to use a Simon Says Stamp stamp and I just stamped that using some black ink onto the white card and I cut that into a little flag to use on the background there so then having cut all three backgrounds to size I'm just using some wet adhesive this is my cosmic shimmer in um, on the back here I normally on something that is kind of like a wet background like this like watercolors I would use like a tape but because the UPO paper is completely not distorted it's absolutely beautifully flat I can use my cosmic shimmer wet glue and it's absolutely perfect you can see it's gone down so easily and that's all three done and you can see I think they look really effective on the white they're just really simple and then all I'm taking is my sentiments again I use the spray adhesive and I'm just sticking that down into the center of the card I decided for this one that I wanted to do it as a portrait card so for this next one I'm using the Sue Wilson sentiment and again I have used spray adhesive for this I really am liking the just simplicity of the white with the white background and the white sentiment on this background it's really for me it's making the background that we've done the kind of the star of the show and I think that's personally I like it really 
very much but I think it'll also work really well with black but for me I just wanted to really highlight the backgrounds on this occasion now for the final card of with this hugs flag I just used some foam tape on the back of that and stuck that down and there they are all three done and I think they look fabulous and I hope you do too and I think what's the beauty of these backgrounds what I discovered really was that you don't need to fuss it seems that really you just leave it to do its own thing and it ends up looking really amazing so that is it for today i hope you have enjoyed making these cards with me don't forget to hop on across to my blog post to see photos of the finished card and also details of the products used you'll find the link to that blog post in the paragraph below the video here but otherwise, thanks so much for watching and I will see you again soon. Bye for now. Bye. Open eye, through the waves cut through me, hypnotized by the sounds I'm breathing in.